Beardo Benjo. Hello there everyone and welcome to my TED talk about this, the Oculus Quest 2. I am extremely, extremely impressed with this little thing. Now the Oculus Quest 2's main primary function is to give a VR gaming or application experience to people who do not have the PC to back up the back-end power for PC-based VR or PlayStation VR. It's standalone VR. It's a standalone VR experience that I can just put on my head and experience amazing VR gaming and amazing VR applications. But the Oculus Quest 2 and the most impressive feature of the Oculus Quest 2 is it can be plugged into a PC to play PC VR games. So if I have a Oculus Quest link cable, which is a USB to USB-C, I can plug it into the Oculus Quest, plug it into my PC, and play PC VR games if I own them already or if I choose to buy them. But the reason I'm here today talking about this is because for the last two days I've been playing with a wireless option to play any PC VR game in your Oculus Quest 2 wirelessly. And it is very, very impressive. The results I have encountered have been mind blowing. And I needed to make a quick video to show some of those results and to show you a very quick setup guide about how to get this going yourself. There are a ton of incredible setup guides out there already, but I wanted to show you some gameplay. So I thought I may as well put a very short setup guide on here as well, because you're here already if you're seeing this video, I'll put it all in one place. It's very easy to set up. I managed to do it and I am a complete idiot when it comes to technology and things like that. So honestly, it's very easy to set up and the results are very, very impressive. Now, before we dive in, there are a few caveats I just want to cover off. You do need pretty good internet. You need a pretty good internet connection and ideally a five gigahertz router. Now, luckily I have those things. I have a pretty fast internet connection and a five gigahertz router. So I'm getting a pretty fantastic experience when I'm trying my PC VR games wirelessly on my Quest. Secondly, there are a couple of applications you do need to install to your PC itself. One is SideQuest, which is basically a launcher that lets you install applications to your Quest. And the second one is a virtual desktop streaming application that needs to be running whenever you want to play your PC VR games wirelessly on your Quest. Thirdly, there is a monetary requirement here. You have to buy one application to get this to work. That application is virtual desktop and it can be found on the Oculus Store in your Oculus Quest. The UK price is $14.99. One-off purchase, once you've bought that and you follow all the steps that are coming up, you're ready for PC VR wireless gaming on your Quest. Fourth, you need to make yourself a developer in your Oculus settings. Sounds complicated, really, honestly, it is not complicated at all. I'll show you how to do it in just a moment in my setup guide. And finally, you just need to understand that the experience might not always be fantastic. Depending on where you are, depending on how good your internet connection is, depending on any interference around you. I'll give you some examples. If I play my PC VR games wirelessly on my Quest 2 in my front room, in this room I'm in right now, it's fantastic. I'm right near my router, I'm right near my PC, the experience is amazing. If I go into the dining room next door, it's still pretty good. I get a very, very good VR experience. If I move one room further and I end up in the kitchen, and I don't know why I'd be playing VR in the kitchen, but who knows? If I get that far, the experience is a little patchy, but my internet connection doesn't reach that far anyway. It does start to get a little bit ropey. So it's very dependent on where you are in the house and your quality of internet connection. Just bear that in mind. This isn't an officially supported or spoken about feature because it isn't an officially supported application. It comes from SideQuest and it's a patch to virtual desktop, the application you have to pay for, that makes this work. So sometimes there might be issues. As long as you're happy with that, let's dive in. I'll show you a very quick guide and then I'll show you some gameplay at the end of the video. I'll also link in some fantastic guides into the description of this video if my guide isn't good enough or you get stuck at any point. Let's dive into the setup. The first step is to come here to sidequestvr.com forward slash setup dash how to. Once you're here, this site actually does give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform exactly what I'm about to tell you to perform. This site is a pretty good place to be if you just want to set this up and want to have one place to look at and not have to look at multiple videos, etc. So once you've reached the SideQuest website and you're on this page, you should see these three download options. Click the version that is applicable to your desktop setup or your laptop setup, whatever it is you're running. I use Windows, so I click download for Windows. Okay, once the SideQuest download has finished, you should see the exe file in your downloads. Run that file to install SideQuest to your PC, choose a hard drive, etc., etc. Once it's installed, that will exist on your PC as a launcher. Once you launch SideQuest, you should see this. 
This is SideQuest. Think of it as a Steam or a Play Store, etc., for your Oculus Quest 2. Now, this lives on your PC and allows you to install applications such as Pavlov Shack or Physics Playground or the virtual desktop patch, which we'll be needing and coming on to very shortly, into your Quest 2. Now, to install these applications and games, you do need to connect the Quest 2 directly to your PC, but again, we'll come on to that in a moment. Once SideQuest is installed and you've seen this here, that's all we need to do for now. Now we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so step two is to make yourself a developer. Now this sounds more complex than it honestly is. All you need to do is head to this website here, dashboard.oculus.com. Now once you've followed that link, you should arrive at a page like this. Now what you need to do is create a new organization. I've already done it, so I am already a developer because I've set mine up. But what you need to do is once you click the create new organization, you'll see this page here. In this box, create a name for your organization. You don't have to give it too much thought, it doesn't matter what it is, I literally just chose Beardo Benjo. I clicked understand and I submitted it. Now make sure you're also logged in on this website to the same account that you use on your Oculus Quest 2, the same account you use there to set it up. It all has to link up for you to become a developer on your Oculus Quest. Once you've done that, hit submit and you're good to go. Okay, step number three is for Windows PCs only. What you need to do now is download the drivers for your Oculus Quest so that you can link it to your PC and start to transfer files. What you need to do is go to developer.oculus.com. The link is here again on the SideQuest VR webpage, but click that link. Once you've clicked that link, you'll be met with this page here. Now these Oculus drivers are actually for the Oculus Go, but they work with the Oculus Quest 2 to allow you to transfer files and they are important in doing that. So once you're at this page, Agree to the terms and download the drivers. After the drivers have finished downloading, you'll find this zipped folder in your downloads. Once you've found it, give it a right click and unzip it. Now you can use WinZip or 7-Zip or any one of the multiple zipping or unzipping tools you can download online for free. Unzip the files and you should get this folder, Oculus ADB Driver 2.0. Follow the folder chain into this one and into this one. And eventually you'll find this file here, Android underscore win USB. Once you've found that file, give it a right click and hit install. Operation completed successfully. Once you've done that, your Oculus drivers are installed to your Windows PC. Now this step was only for Windows PC. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can skip straight ahead. Now step number four requires you to go to the Oculus app on your mobile phone. Now on your mobile device, you should have an Oculus Quest app or you should have installed it whilst you're doing the setup for your Oculus Quest 2. Now your Oculus Quest should also be connected to the Oculus app. Make sure that's all set up and then open up the app. This diagram here shows you exactly what you need to do. Go into the settings of the Oculus Quest application. Make sure your Oculus Quest is selected and connected. Go to more settings, and then in more settings, you'll see developer mode as an option. Click developer mode and then toggle it on. That's the only option inside that, that tab. Click it on and that's it, it's done. Again, make sure it's the same account you used earlier to create an organization on the website. Come into your application, Go to your quest, go to more settings, developer mode, turn it on. Done. Developer mode is enabled. Step number five is turn on your Oculus Quest 2 and plug it into your PC. Now you don't need to purchase the $89.99 link cable from Oculus, but you do need to use a USB-C to USB cable to plug it into your PC. You might have these from Android phones. You should have one that was provided with the Oculus itself. There's, there's many ways you can do it, but it just needs to be USB-C going to USB. Once you've plugged it into your PC, inside the Oculus itself, you should see something like this, very similar to when you try to turn an Android phone into developer mode or try to connect the Android phone to something like a PC. If you see this screen, click always allow from this computer and press OK. This allows the PC to send files to the Oculus Quest and vice versa. When I set mine up, I saw a screen before this screen that basically said allow this computer to see your files. I pressed OK on that and this screen popped up a little while later. So don't worry if this isn't the first screen you see, but basically you're giving permission for your PC to be able to see files and transfer files to your Oculus Quest 2. Okay, step number six, keep the Oculus Quest 2 plugged into your PC and open up SideQuest. Once you've opened up SideQuest in the top left-hand corner, you should see a green light. Right now mine is red because my Oculus Quest is not plugged into my PC. If your Oculus Quest is plugged into the PC, and it's turned on and you open up SideQuest, this will be a green light indicating that 
you've done everything correctly, SideQuest can see your quest and you can start to install applications to it. Now the application to allow you to play games wirelessly from your PC is Virtual Desktop. Now as I said, you do need to purchase the full version of this application from the Oculus Store in your Oculus Quest 2. So open up your Oculus Quest 2, go to the store in there and purchase the application. It does cost $14.99 in UK money, but once it's done, it's well worth it. When the full paid version of Virtual Desktop is installed and set up on your Oculus Quest 2, come into here into SideQuest and locate this here. This is a Virtual Desktop VR patch. This allows you to play full wireless VR in your Oculus Quest 2. Click on the application and click here, Install to Headset. What that will do is install this patch for Virtual Desktop over the Virtual Desktop you've just downloaded to your Oculus Quest 2, allowing you to play those fantastically sweet PC VR wireless experiences. Okay, here we are, the final step before you jump into some PC VR gaming. Head to this website here, vrdesktop.net, and download the virtual desktop streaming application for your PC. This needs to be running at all times whilst you're playing your PC VR games wirelessly on your Oculus Quest 2. Download this application here to your PC and set it up. I'll jump over now and show you exactly what it looks like when it's running. The first thing you need to do before diving into some wireless PC VR gaming is to launch the virtual desktop streaming app from your computer. Now, the first time you run the virtual desktop application in your Oculus Quest after updating it with the application from SideQuest, it will give you a Oculus username that you need to type into the virtual desktop streaming application the first time you open it on your PC. You only need to do that once, you don't have to do it every single time. So I've just opened up the virtual desktop streaming application on my PC and my Oculus username is Beardo Benjo. It's already there, it already knows what's going on. That's all you need to do for the virtual desktop streaming application. Open it, mine was just down here in my start bar, I just searched virtual desktop streamer, there it is. Once it's open, that's it, you can close it because it still runs down in your tray. I'll just move myself out of the way so you can see this. Whee, I'll go over here. It's down here in the tray running. It's this little orange icon just down here. As long as that's running, you are ready to go. The next thing you need to do is take off your hat and headphones because otherwise the Oculus Quest won't fit on your head. Once you've done that, turn the Oculus Quest on. Obviously you know how to do that by now. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. Hold the on button down, turn it on and jump into Oculus Quest. At this point, I'll start capturing what I can see inside the Quest and I'll put it somewhere here in the video. I don't know where yet because I saw that out later, but I'll capture what I'm seeing in here and show it to you guys on the screen. Now, once you've loaded up the virtual desktop application within your Quest 2, you will see this screen or something very similar to this screen. It should show you connected to your desktop PC that, that's gonna be running your VR games. If it's all connected and good, you'll see it here as connected. Now, note at the top here, I do have a five gigahertz uh, router, which is the kind of, people are saying that's what you really need. It's, it's the best speed and it's gonna give you the most stable VR experience. And they're also saying that you really wanna have 866 megabytes per second speed. They're both, I haven't had a chance to test anything other than that because that is what I have. So it's debatable, but people are saying far smarter than me, these people, that that is realistically what you want. But feel free to try it if you don't have that, feel free to try it on a different setup. Now within this virtual desktop application, you can launch things like Steam VR. This is where you really, this is your hub. This is where you come to start doing this process, to start doing the wireless PC VR gaming process. Within here though, there are also some other things. Now the settings and the streaming settings are where you wanna come. Streaming settings is the quality of the game that it's gonna to stream to you over the network. This is where you come if you experience problems when you're streaming these games from your computer to your Oculus Quest 2. If you're not getting a great or consistent frame rate, you wanna come in here and play with these options until it works for you and it's the most enjoyable experience. Right now, I'm getting a nice kind of one-to-one -one latency. There is no loss of quality or loss of kind of motion detection, but I haven't started streaming a game yet. I'm just inside the application. These are the settings I use. I have the VR graphics quality to high, the VR frame rate to 90, and the VR bit rate to 90. Now, I've seen some people report that 80 is a sweet spot for people having issues with getting the best experience. I'm happy with 90. I've, I've tried a few games at this point and 90 seems to work fine for me. So that's what I'm gonna go with for now. But play around with these settings, come into here, have a look at what you can play with and tinker with it until the experience is right for you. You can also launch directly into games 
from this menu, from, from the virtual desktop streaming system. Okay, let's do the fun bit. Let's get into some PC VR wireless gaming. Now you can click launch Steam VR down here and that will force your PC to launch Steam VR and you'll go into the little loading hub. Now I've had a couple of bizarre little issues with that. Bear in mind, this is a, a beta. This is made by developers that are trying this out. It works pretty damn good, but there are some kinks. Whenever I click launch Steam VR, it launches me into the Steam VR loading section, but doesn't go any further than that. So the easiest way, in my opinion, to launch your PC VR games wirelessly is when you're in here in the virtual desktop application, instead of clicking launch Steam VR, just click this button here on your Oculus controller. Hopefully you can see that it's the, it's the one with the three lines. Basically it's the pause button or the settings button. Click that and you're just in your virtual desktop. From here, obviously you can interact with your PC in any way you wish. I can go on Internet Explorer, I could I could do anything. I could go to Ubisoft, whatever I want. But if you're wanting to launch those games, go to where they are. So let me open up Steam. Okay, here I am in Steam. So from here, I can launch my PC VR games wirelessly. Now, if I filter by just VR, let's have a little look. Here we go, so here's my VR games. Now, what should we use as a test First, let's go into Phasmophobia. Now, once I hit play, launch Phasmophobia in Steam VR mode, hit play. Now, at the moment, it's just displaying on a big screen in front of me, but as soon as I do that and it loads into Steam VR, I am in. Okay, so here I am inside Phasmophobia in the loading screen with literally no latency in completely wireless VR on my Quest 2. I don't know if I even came back around to look at the front. I did, look, there I am. Um, it's absolutely incredible, no latency. It works ooh, as well, if not better, than it does on my Rift S. And it's completely wireless. Look at that. It's The latency is just non-existent. It's absolutely incredible. I'm not gonna play much of this because there's no way I'm playing this on my own. This game is scary enough as it is. Um, <laughs> I don't really want to go in here and try and find ghosts. Not without a team, anyway. Um, right, how do I get in? Oh, I didn't get the key. What an absolute idiot. This is a feature that isn't advertised because it's not officially supported by Oculus. It's not something they've made themselves. And I guess because of that, they can't really market it as a selling point. But for me, this is a huge selling point. Wireless PC quality VR. Get in the house. I can't open the door. Oh my god. I'm in. Wireless PC VR games. It just, this is a huge selling point for me, and I think it would be for a lot of people. So I wanted to show you it because I was blown away by how good this was. And I think most people will be because it isn't something they're advertising, it isn't something they're talking about in terms of a feature that's built into the headset, but it does exist, it is there. Now, Again, just to show you that it is wireless, I will do a full 360 degree spin. So I can fully walk around. It's There's no wires holding me back. I don't know where I am anymore. Look at that, I came back to the same place. So you can completely move around. It, and, and the freedom of wireless VR is something that you don't really appreciate how good it is until you've tried it. And then, it's hard to go back, I think. I think it's very hard to go back to wired or tethered VR once you've experienced completely wireless VR. <gasps> a bone! That's well worth having. Now, now, for the purposes of this video, I'm standing quite close to my desk so that I'm quite close to my microphone. Obviously, traditionally, normally, I would stand much further away. That's a terrifying lamp, look at that. This is actually quite a scary room. Where's my... It's fine, it's not haunted. Um, let's just have a little look at another game. So this is Phasmophobia working look, completely perfectly. Move my torch around all over the place. It runs perfectly in VR. Let me just show you another game or two, um, just to show that it does work with everything. Okay, so you'll notice my lighting has changed because I forgot to record audio with my Beat Saber recording. Very clever of me. Um, so I'm gonna do it again for you. So just to show you that you can play this game and then I've got one more game to show. So you'll see immediately that there's no latency here. Again, this is playing wirelessly through my Oculus Quest 2. And I know 
that you can purchase Beat Saber for the Oculus Quest. And it's nice to have on there, you know, pre-installed, take it to a friend's house. It's one of them VR games that you can just show anybody. But I think for a lot of people, if you already own a PC and you've already purchased the game, then being able to use this to play the game wirelessly is better for a lot of people than having to buy the game again, especially if you've bought extra songs, etc, etc. So it makes a lot of sense to me to play games like this through this version of the Quest or through this setup on the Quest because then you're getting wireless experience for games you already own. And I think it just works so well that why wouldn't you? I'm a little rusty. But I do love this game. I love this game so much. I missed one. Run. Again, I would be playing it normally in the middle of my room, but I'm quite close to my desk, so I'm being extra cautious. I can't flail my arms too much. <laughs> Completely playable. It works so well. And I've got an A rank, which is pretty cool. Right, I'll load you into the final game now. I'll go back to the previous footage that isn't at this time of day with different lighting. And finally, mm -hmm. even Half-Life Alex works on the Oculus well, Quest 2 in wireless PC VR. It is just that impressive. Now, I'm playing a mod here. I'm playing the Bioshock mod for Half-Life Alex, as you can see. I'll shoot him. Andrew Ryan, or something that looks very much like Andrew Ryan. Um, I cannot emphasize how impressive this is. Look at it. Wireless... Oculus Quest PC VR experience. If you've bought one of these things, you've invested in something very, very cool. Um, and if it's your first introduction into VR, then oh, welcome. You're going to have a fantastic time. Um, I can't emphasize enough how impressed I am with this little headset. There we go. Half-Life Alex in modded content, running around. And it works just as well as it does on my Rift S. It's, it's honestly incredible. I'm, I'm blown away by the Quest 2. I didn't expect to love it as much as I do. I thought, I need to get one because I'm a huge sucker for tech. I love tech. But the idea of, I need to get on that. The idea of wireless PC VR gaming appealed to me massively and why wouldn't it? Um, and I'm just blown away with how good it is because it honestly is very, very impressive. It looks bad guys. Dear. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You guys can't mess with me. Give me your grenades. Give me your grenades. Thank you very much. Alright, I'm going to rain fire down on you, my friend. You can throw a grenade at me if you, work if you want, but I'm just going to catch it and throw it down there to you as well. Shit, I've run out of bullets. He's dead. It runs fantastically. Um, as I say, I have got quite a good internet connection and I am right near my router right now. That's the best way to play it if you're gonna try this. Um, but I'd be interested to know what kind of results you get on slightly slower internet connections or not five gigahertz routers. Oh, go away, both of you. Are you dead? Yeah, you're dead. Stay down. Very, very impressive. Oh, hello, you're still alive. Whoa. No more mags? No more mags? That's problematic because there's, there's a head crab there. Oh no. Oh, I hit him once. I hit him once. There's got to be something somewhere else in there. There we go. Where are you? Stupid little thing. And there we have it. If you've purchased one of these, welcome to the world of VR. And if you've purchased one of these and you already have a PC loaded up with PC VR games, you're gonna have a fantastic time playing with the wireless capabilities of the Quest 2. Provided you've got a good enough internet connection, you're happy to put in the work to do the setup and it really isn't much work at all. And thirdly, as long as you're happy with paying it, you have to pay $14.99 English currency, that is, I don't know the US currency, to buy the virtual desktop viewer. If you're happy to do those three things, 
you're gonna have a fantastic time with the Quest 2 and its wireless capabilities when it comes to playing your PC VR games untethered and free from any restrictions. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Please do check out the videos I've linked in the description that explain how to set this up. If you enjoyed this one, please leave a like, drop a comment down below, and hit subscribe if you would like to. I, I can't make you, but it'd be great if you did. I put out gaming content every week from VR to horror to wacky simulators, all kinds of things, whatever I feel like on that particular day. I'll see you soon for another one, guys. Take care of yourselves. See you later.